This is a very, very common problem and a very interesting problem as well. So climbing stairs. If I'm climbing a staircase and there's n steps, I can do either one step or two steps at a time. How many different possible ways can I get to the top? So this is going to be something where we're going to use induction here. So if n equals 1, then we know the answer is 1. And if n equals 2, then we know that the answer is 2 because we can just go up two steps at a time or we can do 1, 1. So here's an example. Here's that example there. So now with n equals 3, you can do 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, or 2, 1. So if you think about it, when n is bigger than 2, right, we need to have some kind of function here. So let's say if n is bigger than 2, if you think about it, the last, the, the step that you take to get to the, to the end has to be either a 2 or a 1. So really, the answer is quite elegant here. So if I do climb, don't worry about this self thing. It's just because of this weird like structure they have. I have to put self to use this function. But if I put self stairs n minus 2 plus self dot climb stairs n minus 1, this is actually the correct answer mathematically. Because if you think about it, the last step is either a 2 or a 1. So it's really all the combinations of getting to step n minus 2. And then I do a, a, a 2 step to get to the end. Plus all the possible combinations of getting to the n minus 1 step. And then I do a 1 step to the end. But see here, time limit exceeded. Because this is too slow, actually. Why is it too slow? Because this is something called recursion. See. I'm calling the function and then I'm calling the function again with this smaller number. So what's going to happen is now this function is going to call climb stairs n minus 2 and climb stair or climb stairs n minus 3 actually and climb stairs n minus 4. So this is going to call it twice. Then this function is going to call itself n minus 2 and n minus 3 it's going to call it twice. And so it's going to be like an exponentially increasing number of times to call this function and it's going to take forever. So what you have to do is something a little bit more uh, efficient here. And so we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, let's say previous two or let's say two back equals one. So if I'm on step three, then two steps back is the n equals one and one step back is the n equals two. And I'm just going to do a loop here. I'm going to say for i for i in range, I'm going to go starting with 3, and I'm going to go up to n. But remember, range ends. Range doesn't include the last number. It's, it's this one minus 1 it stops at. So you got to put a plus 1 there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my return. Ret is going to be the number that I'm going to return. I'm going to, I'm going to return ret. So I want to get ret. Ret is the answer. OK, return is the answer. So ret is equal to uh, 2 back plus 1 back. Right, so like this, this is still the same kind of structure I have here. But what I want to do is I want to loop through and then I want to update each time. So now my solution will actually be O of N. I'll just loop through this once, do some updates, and then uh, I'll get the solution instead of exponential time, which was over here. So now I'm going to update this and I'm going to say, okay, two back, uh, say two back equals one back, right? And then one back equals ret. Okay, so what I'm really doing here is I'm just I'm getting the answer now. So okay, so I'm getting really the answer for n equals three, right? And then I'm updating this. So if you could see here, the two back right was the n equals one. So I'm just I'm just updating what the previous two numbers are. Basically, the, the n minus one and the n minus two. I'm just going to update them each time uh, so that I can get the new answer for ret. And see, it's accepted here. The answer is actually correct. So that's it.